Hello everyone, welcome to Praise the Run, episode 17, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we're gaining numbers, that's the, that's the episode count. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're much, my channel's maturing. Yeah, dude. I don't know what happened just then. I, I don't know, my brain's so dead after today, it's very past my bedtime, I'm in my pajamas right now. Um... Before I'm we in got... his pajamas right now, too. Oh, yeah, he is. Yeah, it's been a lazy day. But a long day. Um, dude, games, man. We we uh, left off last week with uh, talking about Xbox and stuff. That's what is playing now. Um, you have caught up on all of the showcases now. Yep, I watched all of them. All the showcases, all 40 million showcases. No, there weren't that many. There was only, what, like six? Uh, I think that I watched. Yeah. Of the main ones, at least. Yeah, yeah, maybe six or so. I There was all the ones that I did react to. Um, and then there there wasn't really... The, the side ones I wanted to do, like Future Game Show and PC Gamer and stuff. I mean, PC Gamer is a main show. But uh, this is a very long show. The uh, but I don't know. This year I wasn't wasn't really feeling doing PC gamer show. I feel that. Yeah, I mean you don't really play a lot of PC games, and I mean <clears throat> with the laptop I have now, I can't even really play most. So yeah, I mean it's always interesting to see what's coming up in like horror or stuff. Like right, that, of but... course, it's definitely exciting. But yeah, with a lot of the side stuff, I was just. Not really, I don't know. I didn't really want to do like the future game show either, even though they showed off a bunch of cool stuff. Or wholesome games also happened. Right. Um. There was another Xbox showcase after this one that was like extended deep dives. Mm-hmm. Um. That was also like an hour long. I didn't do that one. Right. Um. It was just it. It's just a lot to edit and put out these videos. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah. So long. Um. But yeah, the uh, why I was leading off with this is because at the end of this, I can just skip to it. Um, you watched the Starfield portion. Uh, the, we said that we would leave Starfield for this week's episode or for this next episode. And um, yeah, man, what do you think of this? What what are your thoughts about? this universe <laughs> that they're creating i mean it looks pretty cool yeah yeah i don't have like that attachment to it i think so it's not like yeah are you a fallout fan or an <clears throat> elder scrolls fan no i think the only game i've ever played is skyrim yeah and then i play i haven't played any of the fallouts completely i mean i played the one that came out when we lived in Groton a long time ago Oh yeah, Fallout. That was Fallout Four. Yeah. Um. And that's about it. And I didn't even. I don't. I mean, because I don't like own any of them. Yeah. Or anything. Well, they're um, on Game Pass now. I mean, I know who this guy was when he popped up, <laughs> Todd Howard Todd or Howard. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like I yeah yeah and I know they're on the thing, but they're just like, I don't know. They're cool. They're fun games. Yeah. I like them. I like the universes and stuff. But there's just so many other games that are coming out now that it's like, do I want to go? To a game that I, do I want to go back to yeah. this game? I don't know. No, definitely. I've definitely. tried. Like they're also I, really big games. They're, they're huge, huge right? Yeah. Um. And, and it's hard because like, I love Morrowind, um, and Oblivion. I don't know if those are worth going back to today if you don't have the nostalgia for it. But yeah. those are amazing games. Um, I just don't know what you would grasp from that other than it, it being a great world to be in right but there's nothing revolutionary there yeah um, right which is kind of like why i wanted wanted to uh, talk about this because there is some revolutionary stuff here um, yeah but it's procedural generation <clears throat> rpg storytelling like mm-hmm. The ship customization, like all of these like crazy little things, the 
the, the way that they approach wildlife in the game. Um, they they were saying some really cool things. Um, also, another reason why I wanted to lead with this rather than we will be t- talking about the Nintendo Direct pretty much in full um, today as well. The uh, but Todd Howard was on the kind of funny X guest uh, that was today. Oh yeah, um, as an interview and. They talked about it, and then uh, our friends at Kotaku here uh, summarized the interview up with some key details. So I'm going to bring our first headline of the day with a new segment. Um, Starfield director Todd Howard explains what you'll find on its 1,000 planets. The sci-fi RPG has lots of procedurally generated planets, and some of them will be sparse. When Bethesda revealed that Starfield would have over a thousand planets, it sounded both impressive and like a potential nightmare. Mm. What if instead of a dozen bespoke locations, the open world sci-fi RPG was scattered across hundreds of lifeless rocks filled with the same old stuff? Director Todd Howard suggests it's somewhere in the middle. Addressing the topic of the new ki- new interview with Kind of Funny X Kef, the Bethesda veteran Starfield said Starfield planets would serve lots of different roles. Okay, I'll grab the dog now. Oh, yeah. Where do I leave off? Many will have resources, but be pretty barren. While about 10% might fit in the Goldilocks sweet spot that's capable of sustaining lots of varied life, instead of every planet feeling the same, the differences are met to encourage players to keep exploring. And this is this will be a quote directly from him. We wanted to do the plant... We, We wanted to do the planets because we like to give you the choice. Where do you want to go? Because we feel like you want that choice in a game like this, Howard said. That was a really weird way to grab that sentence. We wanted to do the planets because we like to give you the choice. (laughs) Where do you want to go? Because we feel like you want that choice in a game like this, (laughs) Howard said. Noting that the team struggled with the challenge of including a thousand planets. Now, obviously, it's procedural. There's no way we're going to go and handcraft an entire planet. Howard said that there's a suite of individual locations made by the team, and those will be generated or placed when players land on a given planet, depending on what type it is. Which is kind of explained here already. Uh Um, But him talking about it, you know, kind of cements it because... Gamers need to be beat over the head with the same information over and over again. Um, You remember, like, last year, the whole thing was us saying over and over again that Todd Howard was like, no, Starfield will be an exclusive. (laughs) Definitely is not coming to PS5. Yeah. Only an exclusive. It's the same same kind of thing. Um, (laughs) And those those will be generator placed when players land on the given planet, depending on what type it is. When players first approach a specific solar system, they'll be making choices about where to go based on what they're looking to find. And some planets will be lifeless, but that's kind of the point. I think it is a moment when you land on some of the barren planets, and again, we will generate certain things for you to find on them. But if you look at a planet, you see the resources. It has things you want. But if you look at a planet, you see the resources. If you look at a planet, you see the resources. It has the thing you want. There is. I love the Bulls Aldrin quote, the magnificent desolation. The way they wrote this is really weird. And it seems like they were just trying to pump this as fast as they can go. I don't think anybody proofread this. Um, and, or maybe I'm just reading it weirdly. But it's definitely wrote weirdly. Um, I love the Bulls Aldrin quote, the magnificent de- desolation. I think there's a certain beauty on landing on those and feeling I'm one of the only people or the only person ever to visit this planet. Um, Which is, yeah, true. There's the the gifts that they have here, the gifts that they have in the trailers um, of, like, you landing on a moon and taking moon rock or, like, you on a desert planet and there's nothing but dunes everywhere. Like, it's the movie Dune. Right. um, Or the book Dune or whatever. Um stuff like that uh let's see if we can go back to the bottom 
It's a difficult design thing, Howard said, regarding getting a balance of stuff to nothing, to nothingness in a space exploration game. If you add too many things, if it's generating too many abandoned bases or towers or things to find, starts feeling too gamey in some of those locations. Right. So I think we've dialed it at in a pretty <clears throat> well, depending on the planetary size. Um, there's another quote that's not in here that about the way, way that they are crafting these. Um, so in these handcrafted suites, he said some planets will have be that's what they are no matter what just because there's a handcrafted city there and like that's the planet and right like, the what and then like <clears throat> on top of that there'll be procedurally placed stuff around it you know mm. um but then, yeah, you go to a moon and maybe there's just nothing there at all besides, like, resources and stuff like that. Um, but you said there is a good amount of shit to do. I don't know where they got, like, the 10% or something like that. Where whatever number they pulled. That, I don't remember them ever giving a percentage of how many of the planets. The, the interview is not that long. It's, like, a few minutes long. So I recommend watching it yourself, you, and... The audience, um, checking out the kind of funny X cast and, uh, yeah, it, it's very interesting to see where this game goes. I think it has a lot of potential, um, and it's been a very long time in the making. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that you didn't have a. This will be like your first big Bethesda RPG to jump into. Probably, yeah. And this will be like No Man's Sky and Skyrim <clears throat> together. It's like the pitch. Yeah. Um, That's or, what I was going to ask. Like, it looks very similar to just No Man's Sky with shooting, basically. Yeah. Um, Kind of. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. I mean, No Man's Sky is definitely all procedural. Like, yeah, there right. is no handcrafted. Like, I mean, the bases are handcrafted when you go in there, but I think even the bases are procedural. Like, what can happen in that inside the base? Like, the yeah. alien standing at the counter or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's kind of this best of both worlds thing where you still have the Bethesda ness of like the handcrafted, yeah, Aquila City. Right. Um, and then, yeah, you have the procedurally generated kind of backing to it, like a No Man's Sky, but with the budget of a Microsoft. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Instead of just, like, an independent team or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I mean, they had they definitely had backing from PlayStation, but I think that was a marketing backing. I don't think that was a budget backing. Um, but who knows? I don't, I'm not completely sure on how... I think it's Hello Games that made that. Yeah. Um, the, on the funding of Hello Games back then. Um, but that's a crazy story. Hell yeah. That's Starfield. Uh, so you watch these showcases. <clears throat> what stood out to you from like Day of the Devs or Devolver? How did you like Devolver? Uh, like Devolver this? was cool. I feel like it was like they only talked about like four games. It was like more bit than game. Yeah. Did you see which was cool? I mean, did you sit through the whole? Yeah, I watched the thing? whole thing. Yeah. Um, because all the good games, I think, were in this timer. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I said I watched it. I watched it. I just, uh, um, but yeah, it was just like mostly just that. So I was just like, okay. I mean, it was entertaining. It was cool. Yeah. I just don't remember like a lot of the. I don't remember too many of the games from that one. Right. To be honest. So so the the first one i i want to <clears throat> talk about on here I and mean, it's not all these had steam next fest demos um so that's cool uh sledge life 2 is a crazy cool indie vibe acid trip game um like early adult animation style the soundtrack is one of the coolest soundtracks. See, I don't think I saw this one. No? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The 
this whole timer bit was like half the showcase. <clears throat> I don't even remember. Yeah. I might have, was that like at the very beginning? And then it starts. I'm just like halfway into the timer now. I don't know, I'm like five minutes in the timer. Then it's like, oh, we're getting there, return to Volvi, and then go in. And then we got another trailer. Oh, no, this you know what? Slow. I might have skipped those then, because if I saw that it was a timer, I was like, okay, it's just like loading oh, or something. Oh, yeah, because all of these have jokes <clears throat> in the bottom, too. Oh, uh, so yeah, I didn't watch any of this. Yeah. I thought this was literally just a loading screen, and I was like, okay, I'm skipping this. I got <laughs> I got things. In. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was saying. So, like, Devolver has weird bits. But then, yeah, you saw the show. Right. And the show in itself was a whole <clears throat> weird That's why I was thing. wondering why it was like only four or five games that were introduced during the show. Because they did the Volvi bit where he's a robot. Yeah. And they they only introduced like four games that way. And I was like, they did all of this work for, for four, four games. games? I don't understand. That's the bit. That's that's Devol that's Devolver in a nutshell. <laughs> like every... so, there were a bunch of other games I didn't even yeah. Yeah, so there's probably eight. There's probably half the games that you missed, but right. the the other three of those four games we knew existed. I think we saw two of those games. Sludge Life was the first time that was actually shown off. Yeah, um, Sludge Life two, but uh, in that they did announce at the end that Shadows of the Damned. From the Xbox 360. From Suda51. Fucking shit, cunt. Uh, it's coming back. The, uh... Have, did you ever play Shadows of the Damned? Back in the day? That's a, that's a weird, cool game. I don't think so. It's a... It's kind of like... It... It looks like any other 360 shooter from back then with like Dante's Inferno biker like kind of feel to it. Yeah. But Suda 51 and Grasshopper is, are insane. And that's a cool gun. Yeah. It's just this whole. Their games are a vibe. This game was it's a, a vibe in its own. Um. I wish I could explain the gameplay better, but look, you'll see a little bit of it, I think. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a horror shooter, like Resident Evil or something like that. But oh, it's really? like super action-y and stuff. Or Max Payne is probably <clears throat> good. I don't think there's a slow Um But then, yeah, they announced the Grasshopper Direct. Uh, I also didn't react to that. That, that was... The Grasshopper directs are also bits, usually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was one where, like, Suda was talking over the trailer of No More Heroes 3, mm. which is, that's also them, the No More Heroes games. Um, He was talking about a game that was in its concept phase over the trailer of the game that's supposed to be coming out oh, soon. Nice. <laughs> and that was the bit. That's a, that's a very Suda 51 thing to do. And Devolver and Suda are a match made in heaven. Um, so yeah, you get this weird, cool homage to Volvi and all of these indie Devolver games in this. Yeah, those are cool. I, I almost wish they actually did this as a DLC thing. <laughs> yeah. Because that would have been just as cool of an announcement. They have announced weird, cool things like that. Like, uh, was I don't know if it was last year's conference or the year before um they did like a vr digital show floor because of the pandemic that's pretty cool yeah <clears throat> i was like come check out all these demos and on our digital show floor and then the digital show floor ended up being like a weird horror game nice yeah <clears throat> I remember, like you, like you said, I don't even remember what was in here. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, oh, we get wizard with a gun. Wizard with a gun looked pretty cool. Yeah, wizard with a gun. It's like don't starve with guns. It's the vibe I got. Almost. It has like a, yeah, that's like a dungeon crawling thing, but you can. I think it's like up to four people. Yeah. 
and then it's all just guns, which is pretty cool. I like that. I like that idea. I like those kind of games. Those are fun. Yeah, it seems like it would be a good chill vibe just to hang out. <clears throat> yeah. Craft some shit. And then you can go movies. back and create like your little home tower and like build as you go. Yeah. Which looks kind of neat. I want to be the blue wizard. Okay. <laughs> this <laughs> looks the... cool. Yeah. The and puzzle game. Yeah, Talos Principle 2. So two, we saw yeah. actual gameplay. Or more gameplay. Um, yeah. That's because pretty we, neat. Yeah, we saw this at uh, Keeley's thing the other day. But uh, yeah, it's, it was nice to actually see more of this. This looks this looks real good. Yeah. Uh, the first game's really good. I it's, <clears throat> it's old now. I wonder... That's probably on Game Pass as well. Um, yeah, probably. I don't think it's super long. Maybe like seven or eight hours. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's super mind-bending. There's so many other weird cool things they added a new laser color which is crazy now you have three lasers to deal with yeah and who knows i mean that's just the beginning yeah it's it looks real good though and then is it this one yes this is oh, the, the weird one. leg game baby steps yeah which is just that with that Quirty leg game that you played on <laughs> from, Armor Games when you were 12. From the creator of Quop. Yeah, And Quop. getting over it with Bennett Foddy. You right. have Bennett Foddy in his new game, Baby Legs. It's just 3D <laughs> Quop, basically. It's, yeah, where you play as a 35-year-old uh, unemployed gamer who lives with his parents and gets sucked into a TV and it's a little literal walking simulator. It's oh yeah, the creators have ape out. Ape out, yeah, which is like all <laughs> arms, right? Isn't that like an all arms game? But it's top down, and it's like three primary colors. Like ape out is a totally different, weird, cool right. game. Like the more you kill things, the jazz drums in the backgrounds get more like built up and stuff in that game. It's such a cool game. This looks this. cool. There's like some scenes where I'm like, how much of this is like, like this part coming up right here? Like, <laughs> is this a cutscene that happens in the game, or is this no, just for the trailer? That's the quad horse. <laughs> like, some of this looks really sick. Like this part, like you really got to like, yeah, it gets puzzly, which is cool. It's not just getting to the finish line, and it looks like some of these are forced perspective, right? Which is neat. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's something excited. that I'll play a couple times like this, this part right here. Like how many of these are there? This like, yeah, yeah. I would imagine quite a bit. If they're if Bennett Foddy is also behind this, there's going to be a lot of. Yeah, weird. It has that silly like. Uh, like the people that made um, Goat Simulator vibes. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely that same kind of weird janky engine kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but Bennett Foddy is like super into like high philosophy and stuff like yeah. that. And a lot of his jokes are Monty Python esque. Um, yeah, it looks yeah, that's sort of yeah. Yeah. It looks cool. Yeah, I'm excited for this. This is probably the big one I want to talk about. I don't remember. I wasn't like I mean I'll play it a few oh. times or whatever, but this is a big one, but they didn't show anything of it. Uh Human Fall Flat two didn't get announced. Which I think I is think cool, confirmed. but there's so many DLCs, it's like... Exactly. This is like Human Fall Flat 12 at this point. Right. Um, like, what are they going to introduce in 2 that's that's evolved? Like, how have they tracing. evolved the game? <laughs> Ray tracing. <laughs> right, yeah. Is it just going to look gonna nicer? Look nice. is, um, is there going to be a new mechanic? Like, they have to really... Well, how many players was the original Human Fall Flat? I think you could do four. Was it? So they... Does it look? What, it was four players here as well. I think so. I'm pretty sure you could always do four. One, two, three. There's like three people here. Oh, there's. Four. Maybe that's what they're introducing. That you can pick up tiny little tools. Yeah. That tools would be cool. And stuff like that. That would be real sick. Um, I mean, some sort of like. Uh, maybe the mechanic, like the domino effect mechanics get a little more complex yeah and stuff yeah i like human fall flat i don't play a lot of it it's more of a game i like to watch other people play because they do the crazy you know right you want to you want to have the funnies 
Right. You want to watch the funny. Exactly. Because wanna... the people that like dedicate their time to it, like learn all the cool stuff to make it entertaining. Right. Yeah. This I played it. I downloaded it on. I played a little bit on Xbox once upon a time, but. Yeah, I think it's one of those ones that it's been on Game Pass forever as well. Yeah, and they do pump out mad DLC, or at least I always there's always a DLC advertised on my homepage. Yeah, yeah. So it's like my game's like you really. I mean, you can't introduce a two if you're not. I don't even know how old Gene Fall Flat is by this point. It's at least ten years old now. Wow, that's crazy. Gene Fall Flat. Uh, was twenty sixteen, but I don't know if that's like one point because it was in early access forever. No, it says twenty sixteen. Wow, well, I mean that's still yeah. pretty old. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's uh But they still have been putting out stuff this whole time, like right. new levels, new thing, you know. Right, that thing just pumps money. That's that game is one of the best selling games of all time. Like I think it's like sold over twenty five million copies. It's kind of fucking insane how much Bro. that game has secretly sold. Yeah, um, I had, excuse me, I had no clue about that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's a, a a sleeper hit. Um, because of streaming and stuff like that, everybody's like, oh, I want to enjoy it with my friends. Right. Like those same funnies. Um, yeah. and it being a multiplayer game. Yeah. You know, your friends, all your friends buy copies to play with you and it's like paying it forward. Right. Yeah, exactly. Game Pass also now they're not even measuring how much they're sold. They're like, we have 25 million players or 30 million players or whatever because right because of that um but next was day of the devs uh oh, yeah or this happened a little bit before devolver day of the devs had some some cool shit in here uh we had bc ball from the creator of chicory um, oh that one looks cool yeah yeah Cute little game pokemon volleyball Pokemon volleyball, exactly. Yeah, and then you have the Lena Lena Rain, the uh, doing the soundtrack. You do the soundtrack for like Celeste. That's cool. Um, yeah, the, it it seems it seems like it'll be a a good one. Yeah, that'll um, be a fun like casual game. Yeah, I'm, I'm um I I feel like you can get super in depth with this, so I wonder how casual it'll feel. Um, but they seem like. They're like you can play it, you can just have a good time, or you can get like right. The ceiling is high. That's what I'm hoping that I can just like get on and like play, like a game. Yeah, yeah. I wonder or if... I can go out and like build a team and explore and you know evolve or whatever you do. That would be sick. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if they'll have like online matchmaking and stuff or ranked matches and stuff. That'd be like neat. That. Yeah, that'd be sick as hell. Um, the next game was, what is this? Oh, this is the new game from Heart Machine. Um, oh, this one looks sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the next in the Hyper Lake Drifter out. series. They're the Hyper Lake series in general. It's like a fast Elden Ring. Yeah, and you have a gun. Um, I don't know if it's, did they, I don't remember if they said they're keeping the procedural bits. I think it might be a roguelike. Um, they said that the besides the main, the main hub, hub or whatever, area, all the places, else. yeah, all the all the planets and the creatures are procedural. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, they've been. So it's like a roguelike, I guess. Right. Yeah. I, what from what I understand is that this was in its concept phase when. Uh, their last game, Solar Ash, was like being worked on, and they were like doing little things on the side with this, and uh, this kind of like became something out of that. It was like, yeah. these little side ideas. Um, it's really cool that they're calling it Hyperlights something. I forgot what the name of it is. Uh, Hyperlight Breaker. Breaker. That's right. Um, 
because Solar Ash didn't have Hyper Light in the name. Um, so I wonder if they're going to do like different Hyper Light games. Like, mm, uh, that'd be interesting. Will there be a Hyper Light Breaker 2 and a Hyper Light Drifter 2 instead? Mm. Um, that would be cool. I would like to see multiple characters in the Hyper Light universe. That'd be sweet, yeah. Um, now that we have all these branching paths. But that one looks super smooth, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, you had this part break of a game where you're going through your memories. Oh, right. That's uh, like unpacking. It's but unpacking like... the reverse. Yeah. You're packing everything up. Uh, and it's what it's like to move out of a house and go through all of your all of your memories. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. I feel like that's like a one off, though. Like, are you going to are you going to want right. to play that again? You know, unless there's like hidden things or whatever you got to find. Right. Do you go back? Do you remember your memories that right. you remembered? And go back at least with the unpacking, it's like peaceful. Yeah. And you're like kind of like, you, I, like, I've already played that a handful of times. Yeah. But, like, especially if you play it long enough, you kind of forget things. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I, it's I probably a good like you play it once and you're like all right i'm put that on the shelf now i know unpacking i think there is a timer mode or something like that i think oh I think that'd be so. interesting i haven't explored I think that you can do it and like you can time yourself trying to do i it mean there's a speed run for everything so yeah. if there's not i'm sure people have done it anyways yeah um the next game we've seen quite a few times but it always is fucking mind blowing every time oh it, yeah is. yeah they really they explored this a little more this yeah. one i really want to play yeah there is a demo of this out on <clears throat> pc and ps5 um, oh nice yeah this is viewfinder we have we've talked about it a couple of times before but yeah 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 man every time we see this it's it's so mind-bending yeah and some of the other cool stuff that they show like the retro games like putting a retro game screen down in the middle yeah. and you like play like and it has a little bit of that um uh like like you have to look at things through certain perspective to complete yes. a puzzle or to complete a photo or right right uh, it's not even just taking the photos and stuff it's like there's so much like this like this for instance like that it like creates the things around the things right. and you can like rotate things and stuff. Yeah. Like that's so yeah. And like just why even though I could I mean I've watched this trailer already a couple times and it's still like like hard to wrap your head around <laughs> that it's like, oh god. Yeah. Yeah. Two D to three D instantly like that is just crazy. Yeah, and the demo they do some really cool things with different types of drawings and stuff like that and paintings and stuff. Like they it's not just photographs. And then I've never seen that cat before anymore. until this trailer. Oh, the, the lucky cat? Yeah. yeah. Like cloning objects. Now you got four of them if you dump that one out. Right. Like how many times can you do that? Yeah. This, you know? Like take right. a picture, multiply again. It's deleting parts of the world so you can get to hidden places super cool and like how much of the world right like this yeah that would like how much of the world can you build too it looks like you might have a limited number of photos yeah well it's a polaroid so i wonder if you can like you have to find them as you go or whatever because i'd love to just like keep taking photos and like doing weird that's what it seemed like you you could do because like there's also photographs around the world that you can pick up and fuck with Mm -hmm. Um, like that cat is sitting on a drawing and you can pick it up and then do right. something with it and then take a picture of that. And it seemed to work like that where you could just keep placing things on top of things. Um, so yeah. I wonder if it's accounted for that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, that This was the one part that was like, okay, it, like the sound effects and stuff are all different when you walk through it and everything. Right. It, just real cool, cool stuff. Um, yeah, Viewfinder comes out in like a week. Uh, next was Haunty. Haunty looks cool. Oh, like yeah. Games this, one looks, that stuff. this one looks cute. Yeah. I love cute little creepy games, but it's a bullet hell possessor game. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that looks cool. Um, it looks cute, but I was like, meh. Yeah, yeah. 
Cart Life is coming back. Cart Life is a old pixel game oh, RPG yeah. thing. This one again, um, I was just like, okay, it's yeah. coming back, but it's not like they're not doing anything. No, uh, I forgot what the story is with this. Maybe that'd be worth going down a rabbit hole. Um, just to read myself, but the the dude like was going through some shit and like took it down or something like that and it's been gone forever mm. for like well over a decade now and that's kind of why it's a big deal in here oh, right. um is that they've done like the work to restore it and bring it to other platforms and stuff too um right. yeah well, still yeah yeah right get out of here car life this looks this next one looks cool yeah so kyle and i were having a conversation about youtubers that we didn't know where where they went Quibble Cop was mentioned. I brought him up. And I was like, I wonder where Quibble Cop went. He was like, who? I was like, he was like, PewDiePie, Micro Markiplier. He was like in the four million, five million subscriber range, and it seemed like I just haven't heard of him since. Apparently, he owns a video game studio, and they're making a sick ass skate game. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's called Hell Skate, which is such a great cool, name. Yeah. It looks super so nice. Dope. And like the whole concept is like, hey skate art is really cool but skate games don't really do anything with it besides it just being a graphic on a skateboard so what about if we made the world a giant skate graphic right and that sounds sick as fuck <laughs> yeah it's all really cool when you're just fighting all these things while you're doing combos and shit yeah there's like a skate renaissance man and like this is this is great. You have people that worked on Tony Hawk's Underground, like this dude, like yeah. directing the game and making sure it plays like properly and stuff. It, I'm really excited to see what this is like. Um, we also got Thirsty Suitors, which is another skate game that was like, a, we've seen it. It's a a skate dating sim turn based oh, right. RPG thing. Yeah. Um, that looks pretty cool that's that was the vibe i had at this at first i was like it can't just be skating as the main point no skating and killing things at the same time yeah um this is straight up the mall level from tony hawk right and just abandoned just your, uh, in hell yeah. yeah you're going through backwards instead <laughs> it's crazy what a cool cool game i'm excited for that i don't think they gave it a date but uh that, that'll be real exciting uh, Henry Halfhead. Oh, this one looks cool. Yeah. Quirky little fun thing. I, I, Seems like you can really mess around a lot with this. Right. This is uh, another Possessor game. That's a theme of this episode, I guess. Or this showcase was possessing things. Um, Henry Halfhead. They, they put out a demo. I don't know if they put out a demo on Steam, the game's next fest or whatever, but people played it at Summer Games Fest. And uh, this was... What they're showing off is the demo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems cool. Apparently, it's really far away. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I didn't realize at the time, but I think this is like later 2024 is what they announced. I'm excited to see like how extensive it gets. Like, right. I want there to be like hours of just possessing things and... And co-op. Right. There is co-op, which looks super cool. All the little mini, yeah, like. Henry Halfhead. It seems like there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't put a date here, but yeah, the developers said 2024. Definitely want to half. Is definitely what they want to play that. Yeah, yeah. All of these games, like, any games are so cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cocoon. We've seen this a few times. I think we've seen this at Xbox a couple of times. Um, this is the game designer of what was once played in labs um the play the gameplay designer behind a uh, limbo and inside mm. um making his game uh it's you play as a little beetle uh with the balls, with the balls yeah this looks cool universes. yeah um yeah and this did look play. neat a nice little puzzle game yeah yeah it's apparently like I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. Apparently, like, even when you get your hands on it, it's really hard to describe. But, like, you're going into worlds to solve puzzles to go on the outside of the world. Um, and it's all in, like, these, like, men in black marble things. Yeah. Um, 
some of them have like power some of them don't i think the only time you can dive into a world is like on these little pad things it yeah. seems like um but you like use that whole concept to get around different things and stuff like that. i'm interested to see like how like it looks cool like you know you can jump out of this world and you can jump out of that world but how linear or repetitive is it going to become right you know like is it just going to be like all right let me jump back into three worlds and grab this and jump back out and move this around and yeah I'll, i gotta go back and do it again like i like puzzle games but if it's just the same two or three things over and over again well that's i don't know yeah it it does look sick it it does look sick i don't i don't know about the repetitiveness because there's boss fights in this game too that's true yeah yeah, um, yeah. And it having a boss fight mechanic was like kind of crazy, but apparently, uh, what people were saying when they played this was uh, they're kind of unforgiving. Um, it's kind of soulsy, and I mean, soulsy is relative, I guess, but like you gotta be on your shit and like dodge out of the way and stuff. Like, yeah. you don't have a dodge roll, but like you gotta get out of the way of attacks because you, if you get hit, you get sent back world oh wow and you have to jump back in right um now i don't know if you lose progress that way or not i I don't think so um but that seems like you gotta be on your shit like there has to be some kind of punishment for being hit right Mm -hmm. um you don't see it ever in this trailer i don't it also kind of reminds me of that game um uh chronos yeah we like jumping through different portals to do puzzles to kind of you're kind of world hopping that way right similar similar idea not quite as like meta i think but you do have to like go to different worlds to complete things to go back to other ones and but that's a lot more souls that is like a souls game with the dodge and the yeah yeah that sounds cool i'll have to check that out i have the hard copy of that one. Oh really yeah, yeah. damn i'll have to play that that's that cool. cool um but I mean, I do game from people behind inside of Limbo. It looks cool. Yeah, I mean, no, it still looks cool. Um, then you got this game, Ate. I love games like this. Give me games that I could just. The world is a needs color, and I'm there to color it. Yeah. Um, chicory, uh, da blob. I'm curious how was. like limited you are to the paint. Like, can you just can I just sit there and fill everything in right now? that it doesn't seem like it so yeah there is a meter up top it seems um, like you have some sort of right yeah, yeah it seems like you have a meter and like when you unlock new parts of the world it will like drop paint globs mm-hmm. for you and you'll be able to paint more um but like you have to discover certain things to progress right or get so you like, have to kind of like limit your paint perhaps yeah and then you can paint at home that's what really got me like this part was cool and then when they showed like the like how vast yeah. the painting on the canvases were and like the 3d like being able to literally take any object you discover right and then put it onto that was what really got me i was yeah. like i'm gonna spend hours just doing that yeah when I, I didn't notice at first whenever he goes over like a certain like thing like the the bench or for something like that sometimes like an icon will pop up a certain to that specific object right and then um, you and then you have that yeah that's like part of your this thing and that, that yeah that was what really yeah i was like oh man and it seems like okay well some of them are gonna you're, you're gonna have paintings that you could just paint and then some of them it's gonna be like give you a prompt of like this it wants you to <clears throat> it wants you to put these things in this painting. But even then, it's like... And then it's you still And you just have the, all the creativity in the world. Right, you still have so much... Uh, like, free will yeah. with it. They just give you, like, a basic prompt. And you still can pretty much do with it what you want. That's so cool. So, like, the uniqueness between everyone is going to be, like, so vast. Yeah, it looks yeah. super cool. Super, super cool. Thanks. I'm excited to see like tweets of people's like paintings. And, and then this like part too, there's like a a third part where you have to like kind of make friends. It's almost yeah. not like a dating sim, but like a friend sim. Like a starting you could sim. miss those people. Yeah. And yeah. not 
advance in that part of the game or whatever. And then like there's also going to be things that it, like the paintings will be different because people will be discovering different objects and stuff too. Right. You know, like that yeah, that one looks super cool. It's real cool. It's probably not super long. No, no, it's probably like 6 but hours at most. Super but that's cool. all I need. That's um unfinished swan is another game that's kind of like that it's less painterly but you go through the world and like colors as you go um this was the sheep herding game um i forgot what this was called this kind of looked cute i don't know how much i'd play of this oh yeah um this one looked cool it's like a puzzle game with sheep herding basically yeah. little probably a fun little i i just i feel like it's gonna get like, am I going to have to keep sheep alive? Like, right. Is it going to be one of those games where, like, the sheep are, like, jumping off of cliffs and stuff, and I got to... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a full Lemmings like that. Right. Yeah, but I don't want that. There's, like, some psychological or, like, some philosophical, spiritual meaning behind yeah. getting these sheep in these gates. I don't know if I'm wanting to do that for several hours but if it's a two hour sheet i mean if it's game, peaceful maybe. you know maybe they got a nice soundtrack or a cool story to it yeah but even like if it's over two hours that's a lot that's right a lot of sheep i mean yeah if the sheep are cute it's <laughs> a lot of game um oh you know what i skipped this one completely this one, i was yeah. like this looks too it's i'm not even interested <laughs> i watched the first couple minutes and i was like this looks like nothing i want to yeah. play just because it does it doesn't look like anything that I haven't played before. <laughs> right. It's a visual novel, dating sim, action, JRPG, where you play a boy, as a boy with a blue arm. Um, and that blue arm turns into different things. Uh, it's probably super fun, but I'm just not... Out of, out of all the games I want to play right now, it's not blue arm boy yeah there's like a persona mechanic with like days and stuff so i'm interested yeah. in that that's what it kind of reminds me of the most is like that's what i thought uh, of. i was like i'll just play that a budget persona yeah yeah but they came out with a game just like this not too long ago called soul hackers which uh, is an actual persona game yeah like a shin megami tensei game uh, interesting so i would say go play that if you want if that catches if that game was your bag um but yeah, it's not mine either. So I love Persona though. Um, this next one is the one that I wanted to show you probably the most. Just because I think this is like the coolest fucking thing. Like not even from a video game standpoint. From a tool standpoint. Retro gadgets is one of the coolest things I have seen. So you are making these devices inside. You can program these devices inside the thing. And run games within the game and stuff like that. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, it teaches you both digital like software engineering and physical like like soldering and stuff like that. Like there's that's so cool. many cool things and it teaches you Pico Eight, which is old school software for like uh eight bits and stuff. Wow, I um, think I skipped over this because it looked like. A bunch of nerd stuff. <laughs> this, yeah, it is a bunch of nerd I stuff. I was like, oh, building things. I don't want to play that. I mean, it does look cool, but. This is real cool. This, I oh, don't know, man. This is like, it, it's, if this is $10, like, this is like the cheapest video game software ever. If they, if this does what I think it can do, um, we'll see. But he does say in it, he thinks that people, people already in the studio are building things in this that he didn't ever think were able to create because they aren't humanly possible to create. Right. So it'd be, it's very interesting to see what. I'm sure it's going to lead to a lot of crazy things, like yeah. especially the people that are already knowledgeable in that. Yeah. And now they can just take that and have limited or unlimited resources yeah i'm and you sure can that people's gadgets right i'm sure that it'll be it'll get crazy it'll yeah. be super cool i'm excited Music for it recording. for the for everyone else that wants to play it <laughs> i probably won't it's not because it i mean i might i'll try it i'd like to i'll probably like beat the the main story or something if that's the that's what i'm saying if though, that's like, in the bag that's not even 
No, I don't think. I mean, there might be a. Story you think it's or just straight creative mode? There's not like a. There might be something like RPG to teach mode. you like basic things. There might be some RPG thing, but I think the core functionality it's just of straight what sandbox. it is. I think I think it's just gonna, for what I think this is, its future will be is just a tool mm. asset, like the ability to build these machines, these recording devices and stuff. Yeah. And, be able to share it with anybody on such a cheap level um like synthesize be able to make synthesizers and stuff right um i think as a tool it's awesome it's yeah. like yeah and that's where the asset is i don't even i think somebody like you is thinking i could the enjoyment from playing it i think it's gonna be like picking it up and like being able to download somebody's like recording software and like be able to edit your audio with it and stuff right yeah yeah someone who has that like gadgety love yeah we'll want to play that for like hours just building just things. building sound chips <laughs> right yeah because that, that's what they were doing they were building they had like some little things of like actual sound like synthesizer sound chips and stuff that i've seen this is another buildy one that i was going to talk about just because i thought it was a little cool um where you build your I robots. thought this one was cooler than the other one. Yeah. Honestly, just because yeah. like, there's like an actual game. Just here. because it is, well, one, it is an actual game, and two, like you do have to do like, there's a lot of critical thinking on how to, like you, you. It seems to be you have a lot of options on how to build something, but you still have to kind of make it make sense. Yeah. Or, you know, but there's still like you still have like options of variety, you know, and it seems like a huge map. Right. Like, there seems to be a lot to do, you know? Yeah, it's, they, it does say, it did say, I don't know, maybe, maybe it wasn't this one. I don't, maybe, no, it's not procedural. Um, It said it had, um, it does say it was procedural. It has its main missions, and then all of the, the side, side missions, missions are procedural. procedural. Yeah, That's yeah. what it was, yeah. Whereas the main ones are, like, always the same or whatnot. That, that, it'll be. But this is cool because, like, some of these oh, machines so and stuff, like this, like, I don't know if I'd ever think of this, think of to do this, especially right. with this part at the end where it does a side clamp. Yeah, locks and it stuff. In. It's like that one has to be specific for that. Yeah, like, there'd be no way I I would, but that that kind of stuff, and then like you can get silly with it near the end <laughs> when like you have all the parts and things, and so yeah, uh, oh, yeah, this so one cool. excited me more. Just because, like, also because it's, like, open world. You're not, like, stuck on a table yeah. just, like, soldering and stuff. Like, Yeah, there's, like, a whole a whole world to explore with all of these, like, cool things that you're actually going to be making. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this will also, people also create silly. It kind of reminds me of that game that came out on the PC a long time ago where you could create pretty much anything out of, like, moving pieces. People are, like, making, like, things to, like scoop up people i can't think of the name it's a computer game i don't know uh there's a bunch of games <laughs> right no yeah. now yeah right i only know like five so in my <laughs> head it's just this one but you probably thought of 12 as i was describing it so uh it looks sick though I, it, yeah it looks too cool um i'll play it this last game is like my salt domain. and sea yeah, yeah salt and sea is like Chronicles. that's like another like you play it once maybe yeah. twice yeah, it can't be more than like thirty hours long. I can't because yeah, it's gonna be too long. Like Spirit Fair, I love Spirit Fair, but that game is long. Right. Yeah, really I, mean, I feel like even Spirit Fair has more variety than that game. Yeah, definitely. Because that one's still like a farming sim or whatever as well. So like, <gasps> but that seems like it's very linear and which there's nothing wrong with a linear game, but you know. Right. You really gotta sell it for me now, because you know, I've always preferred a variety over just a single path story. Yeah, me too. Like when Heavy Rain came out back in the day, that was like mind blowing to me. I was like multiple endings. Yeah, yeah, and that, that that's true. It back back then, it was when it first came it. out. I loved it Heavy was, Rain. It Obviously, it didn't live up to its <laughs> hype, but it was. Sean! It was amazing back in the day. Even being able to press Sean 
I just the whole time was so funny to me. I this pressed... game I will never play. This game looks horrible. This look yeah, so it looks so bad. Mass Massive is making two games. Um all three games if you count the division. They are making Avatar the Frontiers of Pandora. The first I mean not the first big game, the second game that they showed off at this Ubisoft conference. Um but the first this is the one that we were waiting to see. Um yeah this looks bad man it does not look good it looks like a playstation 2 game it looks like a playstation 2 game it's fucking far cry with blue people it's not even right. like they're not even trying to hide it um which i mean yeah pandora is probably the coolest place that you could have that yeah honestly right. like it gets me excited to play a far cry like game because far cry is not doing it for me so i am excited for that this looks this is real bad. Those blue people do not look good. I don't even really like Avatar. Yeah, I don't so like Avatar. So it's like, either. I don't have any reason to play the game. <laughs> yeah. You know? I do I do think it's interesting where you're like, you're kidnapped. You were kidnapped as a child and trained to be a human. So you have human-like gun control, but you're also like exploring your navi roots right and do you betray your navi brethren and side with the humans or do you save the planet right um, now if you're given that option that'd be cool that's but... that's the idea behind it yeah i wonder how deep they go james cameron is behind this he comes out right after this oh that's right yeah he's um, like i'm james cameron i'm james cameron and you know that submarine that people just died in i had one of those <laughs> i went really far under the water that was crazy right now blue people now blue people so what is interesting i'm not a huge avatar person but what people have mentioned um they talk about land travel they talk about air travel the new movie it's about water. They yeah. met, did not mention water at all in this. Um, so no, it looked like, like a lot of air stuff. You're yeah, flying, you're, you're diving. The first movie. Um, so people are thinking, hey, if they do make it a second game, it will probably be the the water whales. I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I hope. Maybe I don't know. We don't need. We didn't need the first game. Dude, there is a 360 Avatar game that is so bad that I got. We didn't need that one either. We didn't even need the movie. You can get the a thousand ga achievement gamer score in under like five minutes in that game. That's cool. Like you can jump around and do some stick twirls and get the a thousand gamer score. Still, it's not worth it. <laughs> it's not. It's not. But no one ever I'm needs like, another James Cameron. Movie. I might have, yeah, exactly. Uh, I might have. I might have that game. Um, and what are they gonna put in this game that I already haven't wasted my time with in the mo more tree mating? I'm not. Yeah, that's how you upgrade. Be a tree mating. Yeah, I don't care. Like trees. that's ridiculous. Well, yeah, I don't know. I it's the the idea. Of, it's for the people that are into Pandora and yeah, stuff like that. This that's is true. it's for them. Yeah, this is the only way that you can explore this world. Like this is the first time ever that this world has like been mapped out right yeah first. you're given like a yeah um and this i mean like i said this water i mean there's some water right here but this isn't that water the the way of the water isn't mentioned anywhere in here so like how big is this map of pandora right um i i am interested to see all of that will i see avatar 2 by the time this comes out probably not because i don't care <laughs> no but i'll probably play this game for 10 hours and be like yep that's far cry with blue people that's about it massive did have another game though that i we'll probably won't do that soon. honestly uh, <laughs> yeah uh this, i'll wait to hear about it this next game that they showed off i had i started to skip when i was reacting to this trailer every beginning trailer that they showed off was muted really and then they would go to the gameplay trailer and it would have audio. Wow. And it was really weird because like every single game that they showed off was like that. That's weird, yeah. Um, so I started skipping through the first like initial trailer. Yeah. Um, X Defiant is a Call of Duty. Like, yeah, that one I was like, man, whatever. It's kind of like that uh, Warzone. Yeah. Yeah, you're just, yeah, I was like, whatever. It, it was pitched as a like 
Tom Clancy punk rock shooter at first. It had yeah. Tom Clancy's name tied to it for It has a while. that like the um, face mask. That's like a Tom Clancy looking yeah. setup. It, and one of the shots with like all the characters, Sam <clears throat> Fisher is in there from Splinter Cell. And oh, it wow. has Ghost Recon like people in it. Um, yeah. It it's very much has it, they, instead of just being Tom Clancy now, it's going to be all of Ubisoft mm-hmm. shooters. So it will have that uh, difference. Okay. But yeah, people are like, I don't think it, Tom Clancy would be really cool with this one. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, you're probably right. We're going to make this its own thing. Um, if you're into that, it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah, it looks fine. Um, people said there it's had a bunch of betas and people have said that it, it's OK yeah um next game was oh prince of persia yeah this looks this Which, still we looks talked about this great. before yeah this was that but it does look cool they showed a lot more and it's cool that they do like the 3d trailers and stuff yeah i know. like cut scenes i mean this music man slaps so fucking yeah the music hard. is nice yeah. like even side scrolling platformers i've started getting a lot better at and my patience has gotten a lot better with it. I used to mm-hmm. hate them. Um, side scrolling platformers always have some of the best music. This is definitely up this there. As, sick, yeah. This is going to be one of the best soundtracks this next year. And it has that like Hollow Knight yeah. vibe. Yeah, people are saying that this is going to be a lot more like Castlevania, like a lot more difficult than. Yeah, people are saying the traversal aspect is like really punishing as well, but very rewarding. Like kind of super meat boy esque oh, feeling yeah. in some aspects. And I imagine that you gotta put, play it double like the show another whole reverse time thing. Yeah. So you'll be that's able gonna to, like, come into play a lot, I imagine. Yeah. Be a, like just to get like the perfect pixel jump and like this like have to reverse yeah that's all that stuff well. that looks like yeah. Time warping through objects and stuff. These Soulsy, like or not Soulsy, but uh, blasphemous almost boss fights. Yeah, and Metroid Dread was an and kind of reminds me of that as well. Um, yeah, yeah, it's super sick. And then the enemy, some of the enemies have time as well. So, you, yeah, 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 it seems like everybody's gonna be fucking with time in this one because also another thing that they mentioned you're not the prince in this game, so the, you, the prince who actually has time powers is lost somewhere oh, <laughs> and you're at like the prince's right hand man on a mission for the kingdom to uh, find him yeah um, and then you just become the prince probably yeah maybe <laughs> and sometime at some point in time maybe um oh fuck i didn't mean to go all the way back out but uh it also kind of felt like the uh you had like some shadow prince vibes in there like it kind of has a mix of like the warrior within story as well oh so, yeah they like, show that in that other trailer too uh, how like a darker version of you appears or something yeah and i wonder how that ties in like is that because they don't really show you dying in any of the trailers so it's like is that yeah it's you returning kind of like hollow knight where you have to like, go souls, back and kill yourself or yeah whatever. get your souls back get yeah. your xp back kind of thing or is that just a different storyline later on right or something right yeah i wonder uh this i didn't understand this is the whole intro was very awkward like that guy got, that guy got on stage and like <laughs> he said his accolades and no one clapped at all oh, and then yeah. he like took off his things and his face was already defeated so i was like i'm not gonna watch this anymore so you remember the old e3 that i'm not like excited to be there <laughs> this old e the old e3 showcase vibes are really coming out at this point <laughs> yeah this was like i yeah adi shack shacknar has made a couple of movies um the movies he's made hasn't been good but he's done like the last three seasons of Castlevania. I was gonna say that's like the um, biggest thing I think he said because like right before he took his glasses off, he's like, "Yeah." Or some of my indie projects on YouTube, his, and no one clapped or anything, and I was just like, "Which no one is either. I get why What's he happening? brought up because on YouTube and in the fan communities, he's yeah. made like, like the Power Rangers Dark reboot. Oh, like, okay. He was the one who pitched that and made that movie. Um, yeah, that's cool. And then, like, he did, like, I think he's the one who did the Uncharted one as well. Um, he's done, like, a, a Spawn. 
he did a spawn one a long oh, time nice. ago um like all of these have been like they weren't student film pitches but they were budgeted pitches for what he wanted to do and i think uh power rangers was the first one that like actually was, like win. he got um but yeah this is it looks like they're trying to do their cyberpunk edge runners but it's um, just on netflix or something it's on netflix which i think cyberpunk was too and so is castlevania uh, this other okay. show. um and then ubisoft has a deal with netflix for a couple of other things as well ubisoft has been putting out like movies and stuff over the last year they have a show on apple tv plus um, oh really called yeah it's about game developers making an mmo with the it's always sunny people oh weird um yeah i forgot Myth mythic quest i think is the name of that oh show. right, right, right. Um, yeah yeah i've heard of that game that, that that show that well that game is also a real game in that show um but the uh yeah that's all that's all ubisoft um this is far cry 3 blood dragon is a dlc to far cry 3 mm. um which is a escape from new york retro future 80s style um take on for the far cry universe mm. um and then they did several other blood dragon tie-ins to give it that aesthetic like trials got a blood dragon tie-in like uh fucking robot unicorn is another game that had a blood dragon tie-in um, oh, stuff like that the uh this is a show set in the Blood Dragon universe that is also taking other Ubisoft IP and remixing it. So you have like a frog that's dressed up as the assassins from Assassin's Creed. You have the watchdog symbols popping up at the beginning. Um, you have like that's the, pretty neat. the crew and stuff like that. I think this I, I think the pitch is neat. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm 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 saying a lot of gibberish to say I think this might be a bad idea. Yeah, I'm, de <laughs> I'm yeah, it it didn't I, it's not idea. pulling me in. You yeah. know, I don't see any I feel like you really got to want to see this yeah. or whatever's happening. You're you're definitely right to say like with no one clap like that's such a great a great moniker of like why is this especially is this here, here? <laughs> right yeah it's like you could have just like i think they were just hoping that this it would, would just it, carry it yeah carry it through like mythic quest was announced the same way and when they did that i was like why are you i don't want i don't yeah. care about it's always sunny in philadelphia and i'm this here is for a game games. right yeah this <laughs> is for games yeah it's really strange why he starts skipping off Um, uh, I skipped over the division. Yeah, this is just the mobile game. And then we got this train wreck. I don't think I watched this. This is Skull and Bones. Um, what they decided to do for Skull and Bones. Uh, yeah, I skipped over this I part. wish I had the headphones plugged in. One of our aux, my aux cord broke, so we only have one aux oh, cord. Damn. Like, I might have a backup. Third. What? I might have a backup in my room. Word. I have a backup stuff. somewhere. I just can't find it. Yeah. Um, but it's like 50 feet long. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's you have a 50-foot nice. backup ox that you can't find? Yeah. That's it crazy. It's like wrapped Imagine. up in a little bag. Oh, okay. Um, but so you got all of these guys uh, singing uh, TikTok pirate shanties uh, <laughs> with this guy on guitar. And this dude over here with the do rag is fucking beatboxing, and like hard. The only one that kind beatboxing. of looks like a pirate. Like they could have at least fully committed. Yeah. To the bit, you yeah. know. But yeah, he's doing dubstep, <laughs> grime stuff, beatboxing or whatever. I'm gonna have to go back and watch this then. I skipped it just because it said Skull and Bones, and I was like, Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, that's Skull and Bones. That's exactly, <laughs> dude. They don't show anything. 
And then they don't even put a fucking date. They're saying a closed beta is going to happen in August. Oh, what is and that means like what invite only basically? Yeah. Yeah. So top streamers and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyone that could pay off to say this is a good game. Yeah. <laughs> They showed off a little montage. There wasn't really much news in this montage. Uh, they showed like a little teaser for the Rayman thing, but they announced yeah, uh, skateboarding that. is coming to Riders Republic, which is cool. Which is cool, yeah. I'm down for more skating. Pretty excited about that. Um, they Still haven't played off. that game, but I want to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I want to play it too because I love just like mountain biking games and stuff like that. It's, yeah, that's one good. of those like chill games. I need another chill game. Yeah. Is yeah, this definitely. that racing game? Yeah, this is the Crew Motor Fest, which uh, the crew is like a huge open world driving game. Yeah, this, this one looks cool. This, yeah, this seems like they, they're just straight up doing the Forza Horizon thing. But that's what I was like. I was like, I already have Forza Horizon. Yeah. I already have the Lego racing game that just came out. Yeah, that seems to... I have, I have Mario Kart 8. Yeah, this is this is even... Uh, it's not any of those it's just straight up horizon you're in hawaii well i'm just amazing. saying like those are my those are my top three oh, top, games yeah, that right have games. variety of racing yeah you know i have the racing i have the lego racing i have the and that hot wheels competitive on game pass now. oh you know i completely forgot about hot wheels yeah, what hot was wheels i watching real good that one i do want to try yeah especially uh, with the with the the crafting i think it okay. appeared at the nintendo thing which and then i have rocket about. league which is my you know random not racing car game so like if you're not in one of those if you're not topping one of those like what does this game have that they don't right you know? yeah yeah it looks like it'll be fine but it doesn't look like it's gonna be any doing anything i feel like you already have to kind of be a fan of that the crew of yeah. the crew right you already have to be in that realm yeah i think they are importing old cars so that's cool um, oh yeah i saw a lot of like older vehicles and stuff on yeah. the, in the trailer yeah so if you have cars like purchased, you're a car fan yeah if, you're, if you have cars purchased from the old game i skipped this because um, i don't have vr and it's assassin's creed so yeah, i was like okay this another is the, assassin's creed. the assassin's creed block you got two new assassin's creed announcements uh and not new the, it, they're just games that emerald have been and announced crystal um, or diamond or something it's like uh, pokemon <laughs> nexus is the vr game <clears throat> and then we get another peek at jade jade yeah. which is the mobile one set in china right um and then we get another peak at mirage which is the one that's coming out this year that's mirage like yeah school. the old school one um which i'm excited for which i am one. excited to play yeah. yeah but i didn't i was like i already seen it i don't need to it also comes out in november and we're about to go over to nintendo and nintendo is apparently pulling out every single banger in november so <laughs> the nintendo's like oh you guys want the back half of the year well that's too bad yeah right <laughs> you thought zelda was an issue well i got i got news for you buddy um yeah the next one is the big one that the one that i probably want to talk to about the most so like I'm we we've already talked about the Star Wars thing, um, it being at Xbox and stuff like that. So this is also the same people that made the division and made the Avatar game. Oh wow. This is the actual game that they're working on. Oh uh, wow. This is this is what all their heart and passion is, it seems right. like. Um this This looks way better than the Avatar game. Oh my god, dude. It looks so good. And it's a shame, like they for some reason. They had the dialogue to the characters on a different track than the footage for some reason. Huh. Because the audio was being pumped into the crowd and not into the video. Interesting. <laughs> so I have all that is weird. I get all the sound effects while watching this. And yeah. the second they start speaking, I heard none of it. Huh. And I didn't watch the I didn't watch this part just because I already knew about the game. Right, this is just more, it's but, more in-depth on the clips that we saw. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it looks great. But it looks super cool, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for it. Uh, Go watch last week's episode if you want to hear us talk more about that game. Because we got to talk about the big thing that happened. I had more news stories I want to talk about. Um, this is a pretty short direct. Nintendo. It wasn't uh, even an hour. It's 40 minutes. 40 minutes is usually the average. But they, they, they 
can go over. Um, the first few announcements here weren't really big ones. We got another peek at the Pokemon DLC, which right. is whatever. We get a, a view at this Palea game. Or we get another showing of Sonic Superstars. Yeah, um, that looks pretty cool. And it still looks great. People people said it plays great, too. So it makes me even more excited. Um, it is a $60 game. Oh, well, yeah, it has Sonic's <laughs> name on it's it. Fucking... I'm not going to... It's a sixty dollar game. Sonic Mania was forty dollars. This is a sixty dollar. That's a that's a lot to swallow. Um, but sure, why not? Um, we'll talk about Sonic Mania again soon. Uh, but the next one is Palea, which is another farming game. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once I saw this, my heart sank because I was like, "Are we about to get another direct with like eighteen <laughs> funny games?" Um, this one looks. It's it's a little more detailed. Yeah, this is an MMO. And then yeah, and now you can go along with your friends. I like it because you can just live the life of a farmer. Yeah, you know, you or don't you have go to do. Or you can apparently build. There's robots crazy. and crazy cool creatures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It seems like a fun. Palea. Palea. Like fun, you know. Yeah. How much more advanced can they make these farming sims? <laughs> right. Is what, is what they're doing. Uh, we this got another cool. view at we talked about this. Persona 5 Tactica. Yeah, that was that Xbox. I like but... how the main or the new character in this, the girl, yeah. uh, is named Arena. Arena. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a fucking <laughs> arena based Every game. Tactic I was like, wow, you're really, you're really thinking outside the box. <laughs> yeah. It was just funny. It's just spelled with like an E or something. Like right. Aaron A. Right. <laughs> I mean, dude's name is Joker. <laughs> right. No, I know. It's just, it was just, they're right on the nose with it. It's like super the, on the nose. The personality behind it. <laughs> but it's cool. It's just Persona 5, but tactics. Tactics. Yeah. yeah very much. I'm real excited for it. it even if it's like. 70% as good as Final Fantasy Tactics. You still got a good tactics game. In right. It. It'll still have the, the personality of a Persona game. But yeah. Carry it. This was shown off at PC Gamer. Um, this is a multiplayer dungeon raiding game called Myth Force. And it's all set in a 80s style car- Saturday morning cartoon. It does look pretty cool. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks fine. I don't know. It's like, is it just modded skyrim no no you know what i mean like i'm not saying it'll play like that but that's kind of like like it looks like a mo like you just got like a weird skin yeah on your no i see i see what you're saying yeah definitely. except now you can play with friends and then some of this stuff i mean as as it progresses it looks like you know there's definitely more advanced yeah the monsters things are really cool. you know bosses and stuff yeah Definitely He Man aesthetics. <laughs> it's like yeah. very He Man. Um, oh got... yeah, definitely. It's hella He Man. Yeah. You know, we got we got a new Splat Fest. Uh, you pick your three favorite ice oh, creams: cool, vanilla, yeah. strawberry, or mint. <laughs> you know the three the three top flavors. Right. Um, oh, well, yeah. Setting up mint to fail. <laughs> uh, then we get another Pokemon announcement. Which I just thought this was going to be like RCS DLC ever. But no. We see our boy Detective Pikachu. And the first time since like 2017 we see this game. This game got announced at the launch of the Switch. Oh wow, really? Um, That's funny. And then it disappeared. I think they put the first one out on Switch at that same time that they announced this one. Yeah. Um, And then yeah, they disappeared. They brought it back and he's fully voice acted. That's awesome. Yeah, like it that. looks pretty neat. Um, Cute. This looks this looks real good. Yeah, I'm excited for this. I love Detective Pikachu um, personally. Like, I don't know. I even if the games just the idea of Detective Pikachu makes me so happy. Like yeah. this Pikachu going around and figuring out murders and shit and kidnappings. <laughs> yeah, I just like that he can like fully talk. Yeah. He has this like gruff voice. <laughs> he drinks at pop- He's already been smoking since he was, <laughs> you know, twelve or whatever. Yeah. Drinks three pots of coffee a day. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> so dope. And then after this, we get the first I 
Detective Pikachu 2 is a big announcement, but it had already been announced. They give it a date, though. It's in November. Um, I forgot what part of November. Uh, but, or maybe it was October. Anyways, they're fucking remaking Super Mario RPG, dude. That's pretty cool. This is fucking insane. Like, insane how good this looks. It looks uh, way better, yeah. It definitely looks, like, one million times better. I was, like... I don't know. I, I, I was trying to... Because Kyle was asleep upstairs when I was reacting to it. I wanted to scream when I saw this. <laughs> um, this is probably one of the quintessential RPGs of, like, my childhood. Like, oh, wow. Pokemon, Super Mario RPG is up there um also like the other one of these is a uh, paper mario and the thousand year door is like this a uh, sequel-esque to this game um this game is real special and it's been in limbo for so long because it was partially developed with square enix oh. or squaresoft back in the day yeah it's a final fantasy mario game right um there's not final fantasy characters in it but there is a lot of final fantasy inspiration especially with like gino your puppet dude down there right um and stuff like that um <clears throat> but they they somehow did it they said they're redoing all of the voice work and everything in the game the sound effects are getting redone the music's getting redone from the, the composer nice um like they're going full out on this um and like people were just asking them to like bring back the original to like NSO. This is so much more than what anybody had ever thought. Yeah. Um I I'm real excited for this. Uh this is probably the Mario game for me out of every Mario game. This is like the one that I I put up. Like, oh wow. Yeah. And it comes out this year, November seventeenth. That's pretty cool. What? Yeah um so cool um after that they tease a new princess peach game and are real cagey about it <laughs> yeah like, it kind of looks like uh paper mario yeah yeah a lot it's of the princess kinda... peach games are that kind of style yeah. yeah um yeah maybe a rhythm game that would that'd be cool it kind of has those vibes a little elements. bit yeah uh, Paper Mario has some weird rhythm elements as well, like yeah. hitting the button on a timer to like get more damage and stuff like that. Mm. Um, yeah, there's some cool that. And then they announced that they're porting uh, Luigi's Mansion 2. That's pretty cool. Also to Switch. Now you have the first one already on Switch, and the third one that came out on Switch. Now the second one is finally coming. Um, it was stuck on the 3DS, so it's cool that they're they're doing that, especially because it's really hard to port those games right it's because of the dual screen um you got the arkham city collection which is coming to everything but uh or the arkham trilogy uh collection this has been announced this was announced forever ago yeah um and then they kept delaying it delaying it delaying it for some reason but you've um, probably already played it on something oh else. yeah yeah i've played I mean, I, just in general, everyone. Like, yeah. It's isn't. This isn't something that. Yeah, but it, you get all of the DLC. You get all th the three games. Like, that is cool. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have origins in it because that's not Rocksteady, but it's all the Rocksteady stuff. Mm. Um, and then after that, we get a peek at Gloomhaven, which looks real good. This looks like a pretty neat. Um, yeah. Yeah, Gloomhaven is a tabletop RPG. Um, that you can play single player with a party. Um, and this is the digital version of it, which is real cool because Gloomhaven, if you want to get into it, costs like $500. Wow. It's real expensive They start getting into Gloomhaven because it's one of those games that has like millions of pieces. All the little, like yeah. Cards and oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, you can get into painting all your figures and everything mm -hmm. if you want to and all that stuff. Um, and they have thousands of expansions so to have Man, i wonder how uh, intricate you can get with your pieces on the game right right it will be that like that one game from the uh the ghost simulator people i forgot what the game was but they had all the little pieces that you could like paint individually and stuff as well oh i don't we talked about that when they announced it that was 
Well, that was the ovary. I don't here remember. We go now. Yeah, I'm trying to. I can like see it in my head. I can't think of the name. Yeah, I think Marvel Snap was like coming out when we were talking about that. So I yeah. think that was the big thing at that point. Um, next thing was is this Silent Hope? I think it's called. Yeah, this is a another. Right. No, this isn't another farming game, but this is like a dungeon crawling, like kind of reminds me of like old Zelda. Yeah. Um, you you do have a base camp with a farm, I guess, but uh, it's it definitely feels more old Zelda -y with the dungeon crawling and stuff like that. You got dodge rolls and stuff too, and boss fights and everything. It looks real cool. Um, I I like I like these town building games, but if you give me like a dungeon and give me loot and then I'm bringing it back and I'm not just like cutting down trees around my house. Like that's a lot better. Oh, <laughs> that, yeah, that's a lot sure. more interesting to me. And this game looks real pretty. Um so Yeah, I like all these scenes that it goes into and stuff. Yeah. That are budget. Like, yeah. Budget on that. Um we got a couple of anime games like that in here. Uh the next one is Fae Farm. Oh, Just we saw straight this. up a farming game. Yeah, we, we with your friends. We saw this at that direct with all the farming games, and then we saw it Keely's thing mm -hmm. uh, last week. Um, As a farmer, you get to be yeah. a butterfly. And oh, here's Hot Wheels. Uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed Two Turbo Charge. More Hot Wheels is great. Right. Um. And yeah, I think this is also a game that you can bring over your cars uh is what they said oh nice yeah. that's cool um and then yeah and the track builder has more tracks in it and stuff like that this could be real cool I'm, ex I'm excited i like being small cars in big world yeah um and then speaking of cars they showed off right after a overcooked style mechanic game. oh i was gonna say this is literally just overcooked <laughs> with cars yeah manic mechanic um <clears throat> yeah as soon as i saw this i was like patrick's gonna dig this this is this is a Patrick and Kenya game together. Like you, you were yeah, talking about. Yeah, we've been killing it on Overcooked. Really. Yeah, yeah. You 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 guys have been plowing through that. So this definitely this is definitely one that would be like, hey, if you if you're enjoying that, maybe you should look at that. Might this. be what, yeah. We'll have to. If if you want to take something slow, maybe go to Power Washing Simulator. But nice. if you want something <laughs> back to this, yeah. And then here we actually see the Rayman DLC that's coming out. Or no, this isn't the Ray Rayman one. The Rayman one is the third DLC for this game. That's the one they introduced at the end or whatever. Yeah, this is a different DLC that's coming out today. It came out as of it being announced. Um, it was like DLC part two or whatever. It's like the evil um, red bunny. Right. And then it like gave like a whole new part of the map and everything. Um this game, Dragon Quest Monsters, I guess had been announced for a while or is like already a side series in the Dragon Quest universe. When I saw this, I had no clue what this was. I was like, is this a remake of a Dragon Quest or whatever? Yeah. But apparently this is Dragon Quest Pokemon or like oh, all okay. little Dragon Quest like slimes and everything like that. You can actually catch and battle and stuff like that. Oh, that's neat. And yeah, I was... I did not understand what was happening at first, but yeah, it's uh, that seems dope. I want to battle some slimes with slimes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Until my slimes leaves tackle. <laughs> it's sick. Create an army for battle. Um, at Dragon Quest Monsters. After that, we get our deep dive into Pikmin Four, which is the. The oh main yeah, this one looks. Direct. This one looks cool. It has nighttime and yeah. the you got the Pikmin. glow Pikmin. Yeah, the the new Pikmin looks sick as hell. We got a good look at gameplay here with like uh, going inside for the first time. Yeah. It's a big thing. You get the little um, dog. Yeah, the thing. dog. The dog for traversal and being able to swim without yeah. having to waste Ochi. Pikmin is a big thing. Ochi. Um, and then it's multiplayer as All well. All the crew. There's like a crew you can... Yeah. A crew to... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're looking for a... Upgrade your shit and stuff. That's cool. What is it? Castaways? Is that what they Ca call Yeah, them? I think that's what it is. Yeah, castaways. Yeah. You're looking for castaways and then you find them and they like send you on more quests and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, for the first time ever in the Pikmin series, you'll be able to go out at night. And that's where those 
glow Pikmin come out because Super cool. the regular Pikmin can't go out at night. So you got glow Pikmin now for your nighttime needs. I just um, want a game where I can have like millions of Pikmin. You fucking Ochi can like break through shit and do right. crazy like traversal things. I love how all your Pikmin fit on this dog. <laughs> right. <laughs> little battle. He's like a little tank. Yeah. So much cool stuff. Comes in there. The Game Boy SP shout out. <laughs> Every single reaction video I've seen of this, everybody has popped for the SP. I was like, I'm glad I'm not the only one. It was like, are they doing something with the SP? <laughs> oh, and there's the underground yes, too. Yes, that's with a all thing. the more puzzly aspects. It seems right. I was like, what the fuck? It's is like this dun- to It's be? their dungeons, basically. And this is like an aquarium. This is even underground, but then all of yeah. this stuff is like, I don't know what this is supposed to mimic. Is this supposed to be like a drain system? It's or just its own little world. Yeah. You know? It's not even. It's not. That dude's just dead. He's just dead. <laughs> but somehow they get him back and he's not dead. And yeah. then there's this. Yeah, there's this dude. And then he like makes you play like a weird turf. Which kind of makes you think like, did one of the Pikmin and one of these castaways like turn do it, it? You know? Because uh, that looks like a Pikmin baby and a castaway baby. Put I was together. gonna say he was a castaway from like a long time ago and like learned to live amongst uh, the Pikmin. I guess that's the more innocent version, but But we're on like a human earth and like there's signs of life. Yeah. Which is like the first time ever that's also been a thing. Um so I wonder <clears> if there's also gonna be like Giants. Like that. Yeah. That'd yeah, be cool. essentially, yeah. Um yeah, Pikmin 4 looks real good. After, here's some of the, the glowy Pikmin stuff. I um, mean, Spirit Bomb, your dudes. Glow Pikmin. Um, but after they announced this with a demo, they also announced that Pikmin 1 and 2 will be coming out as of the announcement that same day um, in one package. I think it's $50 for both games, so that's not bad at all. Oh, wow. um, yeah, Pikmin 1 and 2 rule. Pikmin 3 Deluxe is already on Switch. Fucking play Pikmin. Everybody play Pikmin. Pikmin rules. Uh, we got a new look at the Mellow Year Solid collection. A deeper oh, yeah, dive like and all everything. All the games. Pretty much. Uh, we get Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3. And then we get the first two and both versions of them. Um, there's, st- there's definitely still games that are missing like there's no acid no peace walker um and then four and five are in here um that is actually i mean talk about i was talking about new stories that i wanted to bring up that didn't bring up um this right before the show metal gear solid 4 finally freed from ps3 as a part of leak metal gear solid master collection volume 2 um, Konami has just announced the contents of Metal Gear Solid 1 Master Volume Collection due out this October. Now the internet has spotted the lineup of games for the unannounced Metal Gear Solid 4 Master Collection, or Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 2. Uh, Twitter user Nitroid spotted the, that inspecting the Metal Gear Solid timeline page on the official Metal Gear Solid website reveals placeholder buttons from 4, 5, and Peace Walker. Um, nice. So we got another one coming, and as what we thought from a volume one, um, but it's confirmed that four is going to be on there, and like it says, four has been stuck on the PS3, uh, and there's a million ways to play the other ones. Yeah. Um, four is always, it's just been on the three, and they haven't ported anything, and people have been wanting that to come over to modern consoles for a very long time. And they were like, oh, it's really hard. Um, <laughs> it's basically the answer they gave. Right. And then, of course, the Kojima fall- fallout and all of that would put a damper on the whole Metal Gear Solid name in general with Konami. Um, so, yeah, the- it's really cool that they're finally getting around to doing what the fans want. Um, Vampire Survivors confirmed for Switch. This is just a mobile game. Yeah. Uh, but it's a... It's a good mobile game because you actually got to pay for it. Um, <laughs> so it it has like a budget. But Vampire Survivors, you can play on everything. I think it's also coming like other consoles too. Really? I think it's the plan. 
eventually. Um, you get this headbangers rhythm royale where yeah, you play as. This looks silly. Yeah. Silly little family game. It's like Fall Guys with pigeons and rhythm. Yeah. I don't, I'm, Rhythm Heaven is kind of the vibe I get from it, but of course it's a battle royale. Um, the next game is like the next real big one to talk about. Um, oh, Penny's, this one does look so pretty neat. Yeah, you got Penny's Big Breakaway. You're talking about Sonic Mania. Mm -hmm. This is the next game from that team. Yeah, this um, one looks cool. Very smooth. Yeah, apparently Sega... After Sonic Mania, they were like, no, nah, we, we're good on you guys making another one. Uh, we're going to have Sonic Team continue doing the Sonic thing. Right. Uh, so they were like, fuck it, we'll make our own Sonic then. And this looks better than anything that I think Sega would have came up with. Um, this, yeah. this It looks super cool, cool yeah. So it's the, the yo-yo mechanic and everything as a a vehicle and like using it as like a lasso i love right. it very very smart yeah definitely like a new thing yeah. Real cool. a new take on something and it's cool to see the sonic mania team actually still be around doing something yeah um, it's like similar but not which is cool yeah yeah um we got some new DLC characters for the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Oh, a new track. And they showed off one new track. Um, yeah, we got the bathroom track. We got like three new characters announced. PD Piranha, yeah. Carmen, and Piranha. Uh, Wiggler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Piranha plant. PD I Piranha. I love when they just put him in things. He's also in Smash Bros. now, which is ridiculous. Um, that is weird, yeah. They announced that they're remaking Star Ocean 2. And it's the cool. HD 2D um, ways, and this looks real good. Yeah, I like the I like this look. Yeah, looks pretty neat. People will say this is one of the best like sci-fi RPGs of all time. Yeah, um, I've never played it. Yeah, I've never. Played but it I do either. like that you can like swap, and that makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, I want I want to play this because this was on the, the the Super Nintendo, so this was definitely way before my time. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So it'd be it'd be really cool to play through that. Uh, after that, we get another Mario character coming back with a brand new game. Fucking Wario is back with a new WarioWare, which yeah. I never, I didn't think we'd get a second WarioWare on Switch. <clears throat> um, yeah, this one looks pretty a silly. New WarioWare on Switch. I thought if they were to do something, maybe it would be a remake. Yeah. yeah, this is this They're is crazy. Like, we got plenty more games. Yeah. We got thousands of micro games, so we're gonna keep pumping them out. This is real good. This is this will be a, a blast, like to play by myself or with people. Wario, where move it? Yeah, I can't wait to come um, downstairs and see you wiggling around by yourself wiggling. down here at two in the morning. <laughs> yeah, slamming buttons. I'm just like getting. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Shake the soda. Also in November. Definitely looks fun though. Yeah. <laughs> November third on that one. Um, we got a Nintendo Live update for that thing with all the championships. Then they're like, hey, thank you for playing Zelda. Zelda just made a lot of money. We're putting out Amiibo. Do you guys still care about Amiibo? Well, care about these ones. Give us more money. <laughs> um, Zelda didn't make enough. And then everything was leading to the big announcement. A brand new 2D Mario. Oh yeah, this is brand like brand new art style. Mario on acid. Yeah, dude, this is This is just like, all right, we ran out of ideas. What happens if Mario finally takes drugs? And then this is what this is. I'm I It looks great. I'm my mind is blown. I 35 35 plus years of Mario being a thing is one thing and they're still making new ones. For them to keep reinventing it and making it feel new every time I see yeah. a new 2D Mario. Um, yeah, it is so very cool. nice that they were able to take this and, like, I don't want to say finally recreate something new, but, like, it has been a minute since Yeah, since there's been something that wasn't, like, a remake or a, or yeah bringing back an old game relaunching it or something well they've done the, or like a number 10 you know they've had the new super mario bros 
um and they've done like five or six of those games but all of those are technically different games um they're all they they just all have that title new super mario bros wii new super mario bros wii u right new super mario bros switch or whatever um this is super mario bros wonder uh there's a whole mechanic where you eat wonder seeds and it's what changes the world in these trippy acid freak things. Right. There's so many new different There's a whole new abilities. thing you can turn into, yeah. You get to play Daisy for the first time ever in it's, a 2D platform. It's refreshing, but it's yeah. Um yeah, this is Especially so cuz they just stuff. announced like, "Oh, we just got a new character for the racing and it's like All right, cool." And then and then this pops up. It's like, "Okay." Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And the rumor before going into this was like, we're probably going to see the new 2D Mario. And it's like, okay, well, I'm excited for it, but it's probably just going to be new Super Mario Bros. Switch. It's like, all right, Peach is in another castle, but this one looks like, like, what's the objective in this? Peach is with you. Yeah, yeah, I have no clue. They don't tell you a story with this one either. Usually they give you like a little, like, all right, here's the objective, but now you're just like. I really just think it's like you're just tripping balls. Yeah, I don't know if you're in the Mushroom Kingdom. Anymore. You and your friends have ate the Mushroom Kingdom and are tripping balls. That's what it is. You just <laughs> you ate them. Yeah. It looks cool. It looks cool. I mean, I'm so not. Cool. I'm gonna. I don't even have like. That was my biggest concern with this one because I don't have any tie-in to it. I didn't have it. I've never owned any Nintendo games. Yeah. I played very little, so I was like going into this. I was like, okay, like I'll appreciate it as a game, but I'm not gonna have any of that nostalgia tied to it. But this, this alone, like even if I've never, the fact that I've never played a Mario, this is still very exciting. Yeah, I, I, I want to buy. I need a new Switch. I, I, I plan on buying a new OLED just so I can play like this last run of games, like. Between Zelda and now that they've announced a brand new 2D Mario, Super Mario RPG, Mm -hmm. a Princess Peach game, like, there's still enough life left in the Switch to be like, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upgrade, get that OLED, and play through some some great games. Because, like, I, playing, I have to play through Tears of the Kingdom at some point. That's, like, I, uh, a must, um. But I was like, maybe I'll just wait until the next Switch or whatever, whatever they do. I I, I don't think I can wait. I think I need to get a new Switch so I can start playing some more games on the Switch. Um, I'm actually borrowing Kyle's Switch when I go on vacation next week nice. uh, to to catch up on some Switch games. Um, yeah, I haven't played any Zelda games either. Yeah. Damn. Damn Zelda games, dude. So just that's a good place to start. That's a real good place to start. Maybe I'll get you like a Zelda game and watch because they put like a link to the past and like Zelda one and two on like a handheld all together. Oh wow! And it was like thirty bucks, so maybe worth just buying you that and having you play through one of those. Because no matter how you play one of those Zelda <clears throat> games, they still hold up. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, that's this is all I have for today. I we. We're on the longer side, so I don't want to spend too much on news. Yeah, I think that was all I pretty much said everything about the games that I wanted to. Yeah, you don't have anything else written. I just put all, uh, yeah, I pretty much just put a note on like the games. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Hell yeah. Um, we gonna... will have more to talk about with the, uh, oh, one thing we were talking about only up last week. You were, you've been talking about that. I was uh, watching that this morning. Yeah. Apparently, people are under suspicion that it's like a thing for like NFTs. <laughs> Is like the thing right now. Huh. Um, I I'll have to see what. Uh, I'll have to read up on that. Yeah, because I just watched like someone did like a. They already got speed run records on it and stuff. I mean, I don't know how old the game is, but it's pretty new. It's it's a, it's, uh, it's, it's came out this year. I just watched someone speed run it in like less than thirty minutes this morning. Jeez, That's it's just crazy. crazy. It's nuts. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, the other thing was that the Microsoft FTC hearing is today. Mm. Um. So there was a whole bunch of quotes getting coming out from that today. Yeah. 
rather than pulling one individual quote after another today i was gonna wait until the whole story finishes and then when we come back for the next episode that should have played out for the most part and we'll have something to talk about there because other than that it's pretty much them just like talking shit on themselves right now nice but they're like trying to make their case on like why they should buy activision and blizzard so they're pretty much like we lost the console war playstation and nintendo are much better than us and if we buy call of duty it's no big deal because they're still making way more money than us mm. um, that's pretty much the whole thing vibe of xbox right now with that uh so we'll see if any anything else comes from that um we'll get hopefully an answer soon on if activision is going to be bought or not um the other small one uh well, I guess there's two smaller ones. This one's kind of fucked up, but funny. Uh, the dev of the submarine horror game Iron Lung says sales spike feels so wrong. Uh, apparently, there's a huge sales spike for the game Iron Lung because of this submarine. Because of the disaster yeah. happening right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Honestly. Yeah, they actually, as of like right before we started the podcast, they announced that they are stopping the search for that. Oh, that's done. Um, that's definitely done. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they've imploded by now or something. There's yeah. no way. It's a horrible tragedy, but, you know. <clears throat> I mean, they were all they, rich. They were also, they, so. Well, they were also told not to go down there. <laughs> so they they were they were advised not to do it, and they still did it. Five less rich people, you and, know. I, hey, I don't... Rich people can be rich. I want to be rich. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I want billions of dollars. But it's not like... See, my thing about that... This isn't game-related, so maybe we shouldn't yeah. go on a Let's tangent. Let's not go down yeah, the political I, I got, hole. It's not even going to be political. It was just... My only thing... It, I'll keep it short. If they aren't exploring some... If they were like... They built this submarine, and they were doing like some Indiana Jones, some like Tomb Raider stuff, you know, and they were going somewhere like only the the legends have told you know like an unexplored region in the ocean or something and then they died i'd be like damn yeah. but they're going to something that like we've been exploring forever we got movies about it now we got yeah. documentaries about it people have we got museums about it right like, you're not you're just doing it you're you're just going down there for the for the uh the credits right you know for the uh, I can't think of the word. Just for the, the clout. The clout. Yeah. yeah. That's but, it. I don't care. Yeah. Like, I don't feel bad for you if yeah. you if you did it for the clout, you because, know? like, it was... Even if... Even if you had... Like, it's one thing to do it. But, like, you built this tin can and, like, it wasn't qualified to go down that deep and you still... You were advised not to go right. below a certain depth and you still went against You it. should have been... <laughs> arrested for being a scam artist is what you should have done i didn't know to scam anyone <laughs> i mean i guess that they paid for it but i mean that nobody paid for it it was the dude's own submarine he bought he, he, yeah but he built it yeah and then he told people that this can make it to a certain thing well he just brought his friends on a cruise basically well he scammed his friends yeah yeah, yeah he definitely he said he definitely sent them to his doom but they weren't right. like paying for it if they paid for it then he'd be a scam artist yeah yeah. Either way, that's not game related. I just, I, I just don't feel. I think it's just a huge distraction for what's really happening in the world. Yeah. Well, the biggest distraction <laughs> of that story was that the submarine was ran off a Logitech Xbox 360 computer. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Which, if people don't understand, with submarines, Patrick actually was on a sub for a long time, um, for. What, four years? Which is another years. reason why I don't feel bad because I had to go through all this training and this rich guy's just like, I'm going to build one. Yeah. And my dad was a submariner it's for like, 33 years. Right. Um, it's like you're just mocking us. Yeah. Yeah. And X- Xbox 360 controllers are a huge part of the submarine like control system, but it's not to the degree that that's the only control device. And no. the fact that that was the only control device on that submarine is fucking insane. I mean, there's so yeah. there was so many things wrong with that whole there's so many like crazy things. there's so much more than just steering that's involved in submersing yourself yeah to the depths yeah you know? like air it's pressure. not like a car where you just like drive your car and the car does the rest like there's a lot of like manual stuff you have to do 
Anyways, yeah. Point <laughs> is, Iron Lung shouldn't feel bad. <laughs> they should be like happy, especially because they're trying to make a movie. Right. Yeah, so Markiplier's like, soak up all that extra. If anything, I think that they planned the whole thing. Iron Lung, I'm <laughs> yeah, on to you now. This is all Iron it's Lung. All uh, a complex advertisement. <laughs> it's like the Matrix. Uh, the Matrix things that they did the transmedia right ARGs yeah yeah yeah. They did. <laughs> yeah i'm on to you markiplier this this next story is a little less or it's it's not even dark at all it's it's a rumor uh quake 2 remaster got rated in korea uh quake 2 is a old school boomer shooter quake oh uh, yeah is very popular uh quake 2 is remaster or remake has been talked about for a long time but it hasn't ever been confirmed yeah um so it's showing up but on the ratings board in korea is a cool way of i don't know figuring out that it exists uh quakecon is what august 10th through the 13th um so i imagine we were gonna see it there uh we probably will still see it there. Uh, so I can't wait to see that. But that that was the last news story I have. Um, that Iron Lung thing was like the funniest one. But uh, the other two were still That is cool. Very relevant. Um, what? They're very relevant. Uh, yeah. To the times. There was like another submarine thing that I was thinking about. Um, that had something to do with video games. I can't think of it now. It'll come back to me. I'll write it down. But it's also like in that same, the same realm. Like it just so happened. This is happening. And then. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of it now. <laughs> no worries. No oh, well. worries. Yeah. I don't have anything else other than I got to play Life of P, which just downloaded yeah. like. Me too. Right before. <laughs> me too. We were doing this. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I was like watching the videos that you sent me, and then also downloading it, so it was like taking its time, you know. Yeah. And I was like, I'll just play. I didn't want to like get into it. Like I, I figured I'll just play the whole thing, and then we can talk about that next right. time instead of like, oh, I played you know the first two seconds. Yeah, no, that'll, that'll be exciting because I'll be on the same boat. <clears throat> I have it downloaded, so I can play it through it too. Nice. Um, next week we won't be doing a podcast. I will be on vacation. Um, the following week after i will be back so we will be doing a podcast then i think the day after i get back is when we usually record but maybe maybe it'll be the, the friday or something rather than the thursday yeah. um but yeah i'm 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 real excited to play life of p there's uh i plan on playing diablo 4 oh before right then as yeah, well. yeah um i would like to do that but yeah, that's all money. You gotta spend seventy dollars to do it. So right. kind of like. Eh, There's already I do so it? many games that I bought recently that I'm still like playing, but yeah. I can't. I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, I have I have a bunch of games that I've been playing. Diablo Four is like the one for me where I don't. I mean, I could play it on the channel, but that one's for me. <laughs> Diablo is for like sure. yeah, my yeah. thing. Um, so I, I kind of want to just do that on my own thing. But there's so much other stuff on the channel that I have recorded. Uh, the season finale uh or the series finale of 50 cent blood on the sand should be coming out nice next um katamari <coughs> still going up katamari reroll got a couple episodes left in that uh simpsons hit and run has a couple more episodes before i quit it um because i rage so hard at the that's game very that's very frustrating so yeah that's for sure <laughs> that's real hard i didn't realize how hard that game was i don't remember it being so hard um and then we'll be starting a new series on the channel after 50 cent ends um fast and furious crossroads is gonna start going up i played nice. through that uh like two three weeks ago now and uh yeah i've been meaning to put that up after 50 cent ends but then games fast happen in the middle of all this so right <laughs> now it's two weeks later uh and yeah episodes are gonna be coming back out as normal Elden Ring still going up I think there's maybe 20-ish more episodes of Elden Ring right now to go up wow we're at 71 um I have 89 recorded and I still have to fight Melania uh the dragon 
and then the final boss. Mm. Um, so we'll see how long <laughs> how long that is. Can you make it under a hundred? Yeah, uh, probably not. Can no. I make it before the DLC comes out? That's we the new see. challenge. Yeah, yeah. We will see. I don't know. I I'm really trying to get every episode out as fast as I can, but also trying to do it within like I'm not flooding just the timeline of just Elden Ring. I'm cut trying to keep everything on a cadence of right. one after another yeah um so it's like every five days an eldering episode comes out instead or six days now that we're back on the podcast routine uh so I, maybe maybe we'll get to the dlc in time but uh i don't know we'll definitely not get to armored core in time no um armored core will be happening while eldering still coming out uh that's gonna be real exciting, man. That's in August, right? Maybe that's September. I don't remember, but that's soon. I'm real excited for that. Uh, Patrick, I think that's an episode, man. Yeah, yeah that's all the news I have. Yeah, I can't think of any other games. Yeah, I don't. I'm not playing much. The usual. But there was so much happening news wise this week. Um. Yeah. Yeah, with all the showcases and stuff, the uh. We didn't talk about a couple showcases. Capcom had their showcase as well. Um, they didn't really announce anything there. They showed off a couple of things um, and they put out some demos. Ghost Trick has a demo out. I mm. recommend going and playing that. Ghost Trick was a DS detective game where you play as a dead body and possess different things in the world. Oh, that's cool. And use that to like learn different things about your environment. Huh. Um, yeah, that's a real cool game. That sounds pretty cool. Um, and then the RGG Studio, the Like a Dragon people, they also had a showcase thing where they showed off some of the Like a Dragon 8 and some of the man who erased his name. I don't know how in-depth they got into that. Yeah. I didn't see like a specific spin-off trailer for that or anything i also didn't watch the showcase so um i am excited for this game but yeah that's it that's all i have for me too man Weird. Um, i love talking to you about games it's i could do this for hours we have done this for hours now yeah but um we gotta give them a break right? yeah yeah give ourselves a break so we have new things to talk about next that's week true, yeah um I'm just so excited for the future. There's so many cool things. So many cool things. Yeah, it never ends. Yeah. Um, well, that's a show, guys. With that being said, this is Praise the Run. I'm Ben, also the Bister Ben Show. This is my co-host, Patrick, a.k.a. Litter Dud. We didn't do our intros at the we beginning. Didn't. We were outros. Uh, yeah. Now, now we're it's an outros. outro podcast now. <laughs> Drop a like, a comment, and subscribe. Comment down below if you want to talk about games. I'm always in there. I'm sure if I tell Patrick that people are talking about him, he will also be in the comments. Yeah, I'm very conceited. If you talk about me, <laughs> I'm going to know. If, if you want to talk to Patrick, I'll let him know that, <laughs> that you're there and he, he'll, he'll be coming. I'd love um, to chime in. Tell me all your best opinions about games. Yeah. And yeah. I will opinionate right back to you or i mean it doesn't have to be in the comments you could tweet either one of us all of our socials are down below as well if you'd like to donate to the channel uh there is a cash up down below if you would like to just you know buy us a coffee put gas in our tank help us get a new microphone for patrick a new aux cord for my headphones a new headset so i have you know not earbuds um i'm trying to use the things to like help upgrade everything when i do get donations and stuff it's not don't get a lot but it when, helps yeah you know three dollars here four dollars there it's like oh shit well i can put that towards you know an ox cord or something like that that's that always is nice um if you don't want to donate though that's fine if you like physical things if you like pokemon cards i have a giant pokemon card store all of that will also go to the channel as well um yeah the, the, so much pokemon down below as well <laughs> um yeah yeah i'm i'm so glad to every time that we do one of these it's always a blast i'm, I'm bummed that we're not gonna be able to do one next week but uh yeah i think the week 
after will be really cool. That'll be good. Yeah. I think that Activision Blizzard thing will. That's some big shit that's about to happen. Oh yeah, and, uh, for sure. We're about to see a seventy billion dollar through deal go through or completely fail, and that will be the biggest deal to go through ever, or the biggest deal to ever fail. History um, in the making. Yeah, it's it's insane. Um, fuck yeah, dude. Um, with that being said, it's been fun, guys. It's been real. Peace out, Cubs. See you later. Bye.